Welcome back to Book View Now, our coverage of the Miami Book Fair. I'm Jeffrey Brown, and it is my great pleasure now to be joined by my longtime friend, Robert Pinsky. Hello. Good to Robert. see you, Jeff. Great and the new to book is At the Foundling Hospital. Mm -hmm. um, a new book. Do you like to bring a new volume into the world? I can't do it every year, as yeah. some do. It happens every three or four years for me. What takes so long? Um, high standards? <laughs> Possibly. Um, Which is not a put down of those who bring them out every year. No. I, to, seriously, I think I gradually find out what the subject is of a book, just as I gradually find out what the subject is of a poem. This is the difference between prose and poetry for me. Mm -hmm. As you know, mm -hmm. you've done both. Um, the poem surprises you, it's more physical. It's more like playing a musical instrument mm -hmm. or playing a sport. You've shot baskets before, you've blown into a saxophone or played a violin before. You're trying to master it enough where it tells you something. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's a gradual process. It takes time. It's not hard for me to uh, generate words or thoughts but to find out what the material yeah. is telling me takes time. In this but case, the subject of the metaphor of the foundling as embodying the cultural mix, the cultural cocktail or circuitry that each of us is, mm -hmm. um, that subject and the idea of the foundling as embodying it, it took time. But you're saying that this, this groping towards what it, the meaning happens both at the level of the individual poem, but then at the book. Yes. So the book for you is a, what's it's the a right work. word, thematic or? Uh, very much, I yeah. hope so, very much. Yeah. And things happen in the course of writing it. Right. Where you learn from it. Mm -hmm. um, so how, I didn't know that I was going to lose two close friends in the course of writing this book. Mm -hmm. And their death, in each case, got incorporated into the materials. Mm -hmm. and the poem, In the Coma, trying to bring my friend back from the coma, he eventually died in it, you try to remember what was the music we knew mm -hmm. when we were young. What were the news stories? Uh, Ray Charles, Viola Liuzzo, mm -hmm. uh, Lai and one excavates oneself, mm -hmm. hoping that some of this will then get a response from that person. In some ways, you're sharing the coma. How, how conscious a process, though, is that for you at this stage? I mean, you're writing poem, individual poems, and what's the point where you realize that, you're, that they are all sort of exploring something similar? Very hard question to answer accurately, best I can do is to go back to the metaphor of playing sports or playing an instrument. There's planning and there's intuition. Mm -hmm. In a way, the reason you plan is in hopes of an intuition. Mm -hmm. You want to read, read one? Sure. Um, I alluded to that somewhat peculiar one, so I will surprise myself now. Uh, it seems appropriate. Uh, since I brought it up, I'll read it. Okay. In the coma. My friend was in a coma, so I dove deep into his brain to word him back. I tried to sing Hallelujah, I Just Love Her So in Ray Charles's voice. Of course, the silence grew. I couldn't sing the alphabet song. My voice couldn't say words I knew because I could not stop for death. He kindly stopped for me. I couldn't remember the Dodgers and the Giants. I tried to tell him the stories he and I studied when we were young. It was confused. The invisible man was laughing at how a man felt history jump out of his thick, fair head and beat him half to death as being the nightmare out of which Isaac Bobble was trying to awake. The quiet. Next time, won't you sing with me? Those great diminished chords, a girl I knew. 
the cold of the coma, lightless, the ocean floor. I struggled to tell things back from decades gone, the mournful American soldier testifying about me lie. I shot the older lady, Viola Liuzzo, Spiro Agno, Jim Jones. And by the time I count from one to four, I hear her knocking, quiet of the deep. Our mouths are open, but we cannot sing. Do you, have you thought about why this theme or this focus on that stew you were talking about, that we all are from the the foundlinger, why now? I'm very aware of changing ways of talking about ethnicity, race. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the peculiar situation of I grew up in the town my mother and father both went to high school in, at the same high school. I was also aware that my grandparents were immigrants. I lived on the border between the White Island and the Black Ghetto. Mm -hmm. There was one Jewish junkyard on the Black Street. The town was mostly, that neighborhood was mostly Italian and Irish. When my grandfather had been a bootlegger, his protege, people said his real son, my father would say, was an Irish guy named Joe Purcell. <laughs> Worked for my grandpa in the not mobs. When I was in, uh, a kid, Joe Purcell was chief of police in Long Branch. Mm-hmm. So I have spent my life trying to figure out the American beauty and ugliness of our effort to be a people. Mm-hmm in a unique way, in a way un- unlike other countries. And it sometimes is deplorable, sometimes wonderful, sometimes I don't understand it. I have a poem called Running With Noodles. In it, my dear grandmother refers to my friend Joe Cittadino as a luxion, <laughs> Yiddish for noodle. He's a spaghetti eater. How do, in what way do I appraise my grandmother saying, Robbie, why do you lead, need to run with the luxions? <laughs> uh, I've been trying to answer her question for 50 years now. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, this is, you're talking about a big an America. Yes. But, it's, but it is through the, the individual it's through my own experience and, through individuals. and my yeah. town. Yeah. And um, I'm deeply patriotic. I'm deeply aware of the grotesquerie of slavery, mm-hmm. the uh, waves of xenophobia in the country. I'm aware of my town, Long Branch, as you can look at it in various ways. Mm-hmm. You can look at it as the ethnic groups knew one another very well. I knew, you know, when I went back, I knew the, the black council, uh, city councilor I knew his aunts and uncles. Mm-hmm. I knew the fa- his family, knew my mm-hmm. family. And um, Congressman Frank Pallone, a wonderful congressman. Yeah. My family knew his family. Yeah. I know about the yeah. feud between the Pallones and the... Sh- I could go on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, one thing, though, that doesn't change, and I, I hear it as you read the poem, is that, and, and you've written so much about this, the, the sound, right? The it's music all, of poetry. Yeah. For me, it's, it's purely a vocal art. Yeah. Or if not purely, primarily a vocal art. It's what we have. I can't show you images the way a filmmaker can. I can't give you emotion as rapidly, as immediately as as music can. One hopes it gets under somebody's skin. It's in the lungs, it's it's here, it's inside. Mm -hmm. When I read a poem by Wallace Stevens or Emily Dickinson, it's inside me. I'm imagining what it is to say it. And without the vowels and consonants, I don't feel I have anything. Just tell me one thing in our last minute, because I've been asking people at a book festival, and I don't, I don't think I even know the answer to this one. What, what do you read for pleasure when you're, when you're... I tend to reread. I, uh, I only use my Kindle on airplanes. I'm yeah. taking too long airplane rides today. You're a big I'm airplane like, guy. I'm likely to open up Ulysses. 
I don't allude, allude to Joyce in the poem I read, but it's Stephen Dedalus who wants to wake from the nightmare of history. <laughs> I mix him up with Isaac Babel. I might read Ulysses. I might read Dickinson's Our Mutual Friend. Uh, I have the collected Emily Dickinson. I might just read Emily Dickinson for 15 or 20 minutes. When I really want comfort, when I really want pleasure, I reread. Mm -hmm. The stories of Babel would be on the list. Chekhov would be on the list. Um, Jane Austen would be on the list. Just what a group. I wish we had them coming through. I mean, it was big great yes. today, but that's a good oh. group to have on the couch <laughs> too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert Pinsky, thank you so much. Truly a pleasure, Jeff.